ready for action. So uh, we are here to talk about the test. Um, I hope that you all got my email with the review sheet attached. Uh, I'm going to go through, uh, just do some more examples from each of those sections on the sheet. Um, the uh, one thing that you may find of note at the end, at the very end of the review sheet on the second page, it has a list of formulas that I'm going to give to you on the test. This is so you don't have to memorize um, those somewhat obscure formulas uh, about derivatives and integrals of exponential functions. So those exact formulas that you see on the on the review sheet will be um, printed at the top of the test. Uh, anything else? I will expect you to remember. I said on the sheet there that um, I'm not explicitly going to reach back and, and ask you questions about old material, but you definitely still need to know how to do things like the product rule, the quotient rule, the chain rule, um, and other other sort of simple things with the derivative. All right. Uh, we're going to do the test on Friday at regular class time, which is 12:30. So um, come to the Zoom. I will get you the test and you will write your answers on your own paper and submit them to Gradescope like you would just just like for the quiz. Uh, are there any any logistical questions about uh, the test? I hope you all know what to expect. Are you going to like email us the test or like post it somewhere? Like how is that? I going? think I will post it somewhere. Um, it, it may be, I haven't written the test yet, if, if it's, um, if the questions, if there are few enough questions, I might just put them all on the screen uh, at once, so you can just look at the, look at the Zoom screen. Um, otherwise, I will, I will somehow post it. Uh, I have in the past tried to email it, but the, a lot of people's email is kind of slow, so I, I, I won't do it that way. I'll do it some, something faster than email. If okay. you can imagine that. All right. I'll Snapchat it. I'll tweet it, maybe. I'll fleet it. That's even better, right? I'm all I'm I'm into the fleets. I'm not really. Okay. Any uh any other questions? All right. Let's just do some examples then. So I have a bunch of um uh examples that I you know had had uh, decided to do. But if you got more questions about anything, um let me know. Um, as usual, I'm gonna. Um, I always um, have been like. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna save this uh, this this Zoom what, which is happening right now and put it on YouTube so you can watch this uh, after the fact too. If you if you miss something, all right, all right, let's do it. So the first section is about relative extrema and the first derivative test. So let's try one of those. I give you a function. How about find the relative extrema for um, this one? x plus 5 times e to the minus 2x. How do you like that? I put the e's in there, all right? Uh, these ones, you know, if it's a polynomial, it's a bit easier. I thought we should just try one with the e in there just to make sure that you all remember how to do this. I hope you remember how to do this. Um, don't worry about it too much at the at the outset. We're trying to find the relative extrema, and the way to do that is first you find the critical numbers, and then you make the little chart increasing, decreasing. Sorry, my neck is bent in a weird way, and then you um, you decide which is minimum or maximum based on the chart. So let's try it for this example. We begin by taking the derivative, right? We need the critical number, so take the derivative, set it equal to zero. What do you got here? It immediately becomes a, a little complicated. There is multiplication right here in between x plus 5 and e to the minus 2x, right? This is a multiplication, which means we got to do the product rule. So we're going to do the product rule. I hope you remember the product rule. It is the first thing, x plus 5, times the derivative of the second part. I have e to the minus 2x, so the derivative of e to the minus 2x is, again, e to the minus 2x. And then, because of the chain rule, i got to multiply times the derivative of the inside of the exponent, which is negative 2. All right? This is just the first half of the product rule. I did the first thing like it is times the derivative of the second thing, and now I go plus. The second thing like it is, e to the minus 2x, times the derivative of the first part. What do you think? Someone want to shout it out? What is the derivative of the first part? 
One is the answer. Yes. Thank you. All right. Great. This is my derivative. Now, I want to simplify this as much as possible. And when you're doing one of these with the E in it, the, um, the, the trick, I guess, it's not much of a trick, but it is important that you factor out the part with the E. So I have here two things which are being added together, right? That guy and that guy. And I'm going to factor out the E part. E to the minus 2x is in both of them. So I pull that out to the front. It is E to the minus 2x like that. And then what's left over after I factor that out? Well, from the first part, what's left over is x plus 5 times negative 2. And then plus, from the second part, is 1. So this, this 1 goes there, and then, you know, these guys go here. Right? This is how we factor it out. I hope you have those parentheses in there around x plus 5, haters out there, because uh, it matters. you got to, let's, let's just simplify inside the parentheses. I'm going to distribute the minus 2 e to the minus 2x, and then in here, negative 2x minus 10 plus 1. And so this is e to the minus 2x, negative 2x minus 9 is the answer. All right? Yeah, and this is as simple as it's going to get. How am I doing so far? Excellent. If you don't say anything, I assume that I'm doing great. That's because I have a high opinion of myself. Um, okay, this is our derivative. Uh, we want to make uh, find the critical numbers, right? So we got to set the derivative equal to zero. E to the minus two x times negative two x minus nine equals zero, and then we solve here. I have two things whose product is zero, which means one or the other is zero. So I go e to the minus two x is zero, and minus two x minus nine is zero. This second part I can f solve for x, minus 2x equals 9, x equals minus 9 over 2, and then the one on the left, this has no solutions because, I hope you remember, e to any power is always positive and is never 0, and so e to the negative 2x cannot equal 0, and we just don't get anything from that part over there. So we have only one critical number, it is right here. Right, negative 9 over 2. Uh, I suppose, you know, this is negative 4.5, if you like, right? <clears throat> it does kind of matter what that number is. Okay, uh, what's next? We find the critical numbers. We make the chart about increasing and decreasing. Let's do that. So, negative 9 over 2 is my x value. I only have one x value, and uh, i got to plug it into the derivative. Plug in some number to the left, some number to the right. That's why I said it, it matters what that number is, negative 9 over 2. You have to know kind of what number it is so that I can choose something less than something bigger. So let's choose to the left of negative 4.5. Let's choose minus 5. What we get, we plug it in to the derivative, the formula in the box up there, e to the negative 2 times negative 5 times negative 2 times negative 5 minus 9. And I need to know, is this positive or negative? What about e to the negative 2 times negative 5? That is positive. I will say again what I said a moment ago. e to any power is always positive, never 0. So that part right there, doesn't matter what the exponent is, e to anything is always positive. And then, in the parentheses here, what is that? You actually have to multiply this out. 2 times negative 5, or negative 2 times negative 5 is positive 10. Minus 9 is 1. Positive 1. So it's positive. So over here is positive. It's a positive times a positive, which is positive. All right. Any questions so far about that business? I am doing the old increasing, decreasing thing. Okay. How about some number to the right of negative 9.2? I'll choose 0. I always like to choose 0. e to the negative 2 times 0. And then... Negative 2 times 0 minus 9. This is uh, positive, again, because e to any power is always positive. And then inside the parentheses I have, negative 2 times 0 is 0. Minus 9 is negative 9. So this is a positive times a negative, which means negative over here. All right. Almost done here. This is my chart of the increasings, decreasings. The question was, T 
tell me what the relative extrema are. So I say x equals negative 9 over 2 is a relative... What is it? Maximum or minimum? What do you say? It's not a minimum because it's increasing and decreasing. Increasing and then decreasing. That means if you can imagine the graph, it goes up and then back down, right? Oh, no, that's a relative. So part. this is a maximum. Yeah, you just have to remember... Or, you, I mean, you could think it through like I just did, but uh, if it's increasing and then decreasing, it means the maximum. Decreasing, then increasing is a minimum. All right? So negative 9 over 2 is a relative maximum. That's how we do it. Any questions about this one? This is the first derivative test. All right. All right. Um, so uh, the next section was about higher derivatives and concavity, I thought maybe we would, let's just try the same function again. f of x equals x plus 5 e to the minus 2x. Um, so here's another problem. Give me intervals where it is um, concave up or concave down. Right? Uh, let's try that. So, concave up and down is just like the increasing decreasing, but we use the second derivative instead of the first derivative. So, um, first we need to find the second derivative. And uh, actually, you know, before you do that, you have to find the first derivative. Now, we just did this example before, so would you mind if I just use the same answer? The first derivative is right there in the box e to the minus 2x times negative 2x minus 9. All right e to the minus 2x times negative 2x minus 9. Okay, this is the derivative. For the concavity, I need to be looking at the second derivative. So, take the derivative again. What do we got to do? We got to do the product rule again, because I, again, have multiplication right here, right? So, I'm going to do the product rule. Uh, it is the first part times the derivative of the second part, time, uh, plus the second part times the derivative of the first part. So, First part, e to the minus 2x, times derivative of the second part. What's that going to be? What do you say? Negative 2. Negative 2. Thank you for the shout out. Plus the second part times the derivative of the first part. The second part is negative 2x minus 9. And what's the derivative of the first part? It's a harder one. Is it e to the negative 2x times negative 2? I like that, yeah. e to the negative 2x times negative 2. Great. The derivative of the e thing, you just get the same thing again. But then you got to do the chain rule times the derivative of the inside of the exponent, which is negative 2. Excellent. All right, this is the second derivative. Let us simplify and sort of recombine things like we usually do. And again, we should factor out the e part. So from both of these, remember I have two things here being added. From each one, I pull out e to the negative 2x. And then what remains from the first part? Negative 2. And then plus from the second part, negative 2x minus 9 times negative 2. All right? Hope you got those parentheses in there. <clears throat> Let's simplify inside the parentheses. This is negative 2 plus. I got to distribute the minus 2 now. Looks like 4x plus 18. Right? And then... Add it all up, e to the minus 2x, 4x, plus 16, I believe, right? I got negative 2 and 18, they add together, and I get 16. I think that's the second derivative, f double prime of x. Any thoughts about that? I think I did it right. There's a lot of chances to mess this up, unfortunately. Uh, anyway, let's make the chart about increasing, sorry, about concave up and concave down. We're going to do the same thing as the increasing decreasing, but we use the second derivative rather than the first. So here, I'm going to set this equal to zero. To find the zero points, I go e to the minus 2x, 4x plus 16 equals zero. Split it up, as always. 4x plus 16 equals zero. This guy over here has no solutions because e to any power is never zero. 
And the other part you can solve. 4x equals negative 16. Divide by 4, x equals negative 4. So on my chart of the second derivative, I will have one point marked, and it is negative 4. All right. Second derivative oops, is 0 at negative 4, and I choose values on the left, on the right. So to the left of negative 4, let's choose negative 5. Plugging into the second derivative now, which is that one in the box, e to the minus 2 times minus 5 times 4 times minus 5 plus 16. What's that? This is a positive here, and then in the parentheses, 4 times minus 5 is negative 20, plus 16 is negative 4, which is negative. So to the left, I get a minus. And finally, to the right of negative 4, I use 0. e to the minus 2 times 0. 4 times 0 plus 16. We get positive and positive. Positive over here. All right. And so my final answer, f is concave up on the interval minus 4 to infinity. That's the positive side. And f is concave down on the interval minus infinity to minus 4. All right, this is how we do concave up, concave down. Any questions about that? All right, that's all the E's that I'm gonna do. For the other examples, we'll have uh, easier functions. How about this, can we just say, what if there was like a part B here? Um, are there any inflection points? We already did all the work for this, so we might as well ask. Find any inflection points. Inflection points are specific values of x where it switches from being concave up to down or down to up. And so in this example, that point minus 4 is an inflection point. x equal minus 4 is an inflection point because that is the point at which it switches from being up to down. Or actually, you know, down to up in this case. Either way. All right. What are your questions about this? Concavity and inflection points? Nothing. All right. Great. Um, okay, that was the that section about um, uh, concavity, higher derivatives. Let's try one about the second derivative test. I have a quick question about the inflection points. Yeah. You have to find the y value for that. Like, would you just plug negative 4 into f of x, right? Yes, if you wanted to find the y value, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you. if I asked you find me an inflection point, then uh, tell me the x value. I, I would consider that good enough. Although I suppose okay. if, I, if I wanted to know the y value, I would say tell me the y value. Okay. Yeah, and, and then what you said is correct. You would plug it into the uh, original function. Make sure you don't accidentally plug it into the derivative or the second derivative. Great, thank you for the question. Um, let's try an example using the second derivative test. So this is yet another way to find and identify the relative extrema of a function. Actually, how about we just do, let's do both, the same example, but we'll do the first derivative test and then try it again using the second derivative test. Let's try this function x cubed minus 3x squared. It'll be great. How about this? Part A, find the, um, find and identify the relative extrema using the first derivative test. And then part B, same thing, but the uh, second derivative test. All right. They are two different methods for answering the same question. Sorry, my handwriting isn't great there. Find and identify the relative extrema using the first derivative test or the second. Okay. And uh, there are two different ways to do it, although a lot of the work required is sort of overlapping. So you, it's, not, it's not like you have to do the same thing twice. Um, all right, part A, um, we are going to find the critical numbers first. In either of these methods, you need to find the critical numbers. So 
Uh, f prime of x, what's it going to be? 3x squared minus 6x, right? And we can simplify by factoring here. You can factor 3 out of both things and also x. What remains is x minus 2, right? I done factored it. And so this is the simplest form of the derivative. Uh, let's find the critical numbers then. I set f prime equal to 0. I get 3x, x minus 2 equals 0. So split it up. 3x equals 0, x minus 2 equals 0. So x is 2, x is 0. These are my two critical numbers. You should also consider when f prime does not exist, but that is not a problem here because there's no denominator. That, that only matters when there's a denominator. Right. Adjusting my chair here. Still kind of hunched. I don't like the hunching. Okay. Um, what next? We got to make that chart about increasing, decreasing. This is how you tell which is a max and which is a min. So I make that chart. I mark zero and two on my chart f prime is 0 there and 0 there, and i got to plug a bunch of numbers. So let's plug f prime of negative 1. This would be 3 times minus 1 times minus 1 minus 2. What is that? This is positive, negative, negative 1, negative 2. Uh, negative 1 times negative 2 is, no, negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3, negative. So this is positive, right? A plus times a minus times a minus is a po uh, positive. How about f prime of 1? That's in between 0 and 1. 3 times 1 times 1 minus 2. This is positive, positive, negative. So it's negative in the middle. And finally, to the right of 2, f prime of 3 is 3 times 3 times 3 minus 2. Positive, positive, positive. So it's positive over there. All right. And now using the chart, we can say which is a maximum which is a minimum, x equals 0 is a relative maximum. That's because the function is increasing and then decreasing, which means it goes up and then down again, up and then down again. And then 2, uh, the function near 2 goes down and then up again. So 2 is a minimum. x equal 2 is a relative minimum. All right. That's the first derivative test. I hope I did it right. Any, any thoughts about that one? All right, what about the second derivative test? So that, that, this is my answer for part A. Part B, well, my answer, I should get the same answer. There are two different ways of solving the same problem. Um, part B is doing the second derivative test. I hope you remember the way to do the second derivative test. You find the critical numbers, and you plug the critical numbers directly into the second derivative. So. First, I need to find the second derivative. Let's just refresh my memory. f of x was x cubed minus 3x squared. The first derivative was 3x squared minus 6x. And therefore, the second derivative, I take the derivative again. I get 6x minus 6, all right? And the way to do the second derivative test is you plug the critical numbers into the second derivative. So the critical numbers are x equals 0, x equals 2, right? We did those already in the previous step. You set the first derivative equal to 0. Find the critical numbers that way. And now, since I'm doing the second derivative test, I plug those numbers into the second derivative. So I go f double prime of 0, and I go f double prime of 2. What's it going to be? f double prime of 0 is 6 times 0 minus 6. Make sure you're using the correct formula. It's f double prime is that one. 6 times 0 minus 6. This would be negative 6. This is negative. So that means x equals 0 is a relative... What is it, max or min? Anyone remember the rule here? Max. Max is correct. In the second derivative test, when you see a negative, that indicates it is a maximum. That's because a negative concavity, the second derivative being negative, means it's concave down, which means it has this kind of shape to it. And so the curve is up at the top, which means it's a relative maximum. All right. Okay, let's do the other one. F double prime of 2. I go 6 times 2 minus 6. 
This is 12 minus 6, which is positive, right? 12 minus 6 is 6, plus 6, positive. So that means x equals 2 is a relative minimum. And that's how we do it. This is the second derivative test. Any thoughts about this one? On the test, if I just ask you to find and identify the extrema, you can do either way, whichever one you like, the first derivative test or the second derivative test. Uh, although I may tell you to do one way or the other, and in that case, you better do what I said. So uh, you sh I will expect you to know how to do it both ways. All right. So, so what would you say are the two like big differences between the first derivative test and the second derivative test? Besides, obviously, the fact you're using the second derivative for the second one. Yeah. Uh, you Yeah, in the second derivative test, you use the second derivative, but you actually use it in a very different way than you use the first derivative. In, in the first derivative test, you make this chart here, and then you look at plus followed by minus means a max, minus followed by plus means a min, right? Okay. And this, this is entirely made up from the first derivative. The second derivative test is there's no chart, you just plug individual points into the second derivative here, and then based on positive or negative, you say uh, max or min. So, okay. uh, you know, it's it's up to you to decide which one you think is easier. Um, they are. It's. A, I would say it's a. It's about a toss up between those two methods as far as I wouldn't say one is is especially better than the other. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm-hmm. What other questions about that? All right, let's try. Uh, the next section was about curve sketching. How about, can we just try to sketch that same function again? This function here, just because we've already done a lot of the steps which are necessary. Let's see if we can sketch the graph of that. Sketch f of x, come on now about this f of x equals x cubed minus 3x squared all right um, I hope you remember what this involves um, first of all you find the asymptotes this one doesn't have asymptotes asymptotes will only be when there's a when it's a fraction then you vertical asymptote is where the denominator is zero horizontal asymptote is the limit as x goes to infinity um, this one is a polynomial so it has no asymptotes uh, when you want to sketch the graph, you should make the increasing decreasing chart, plot the critical numbers with their y values, and then uh, connect the dots. Now, we've already done a lot of that work. In this example, the critical numbers were x equals 0 and x equals 2, right? And then the uh, increasing and decreasing, we did that before. It looked like this, plus, minus, plus. Right? This was the increasing, decreasing chart. Really, the only other uh, bit of information we need is to plot those two critical numbers with their y values, and we have not found the y values in any other parts. So to get the y values, you plug these numbers directly into the original function. So I'm going to do f of 0, and I'm also going to do f of 2. Let's do f of 0 first. You just go up here and plug the number in. It's 0 cubed minus 3 times 0 squared and you get 0 from that. That's a nice one. And you also do f of 2. This one you'll have to think a little bit harder about it, but it's not so bad. 2 cubed minus 3 times 2 squared. What is that? 2 cubed is 8. 3 times 2 squared. Make sure you do the order correctly. Two, you, you do the square first. So it's, it's 3 times 4, which is 12. 8 minus 12, negative 4. All right, so I'm going to plot those points. Maybe I'll do it right under this. Oh, can't see it. Right there. All right, I'm going to make my graph over here. So the two values we have are 0 and 0. x equals 0, y equals 0. And then we also have x equals 2, y equals negative 4. So that's down here. There's two, all right? Uh, and now, what about 
connecting the dots. So at these two points are both places where the graph, when it goes through those points, will be horizontal. And just let's get let's get fancy about it. What uh, what does the curve look like in between here? It decreases. That means you go from this point. It has to go down to get to that one. Actually, we already knew it. It has to go down, right? Um, so draw the curve in between those two points so that it goes down but is horizontal as you pass through each point something like this right that's the way to do it it goes from that one down to that one and it has to be horizontal when it passes through all right what about to the right side as you exit this point and continue going to the right should I go up like this or down like this what do you say up or down yeah, the answer is up. It's because of this increasing, decreasing chart. You know it has to increase here. So when we leave this point and go to the right, it should go up. Upsie daisies. And how about on the left side of the picture over here? You look here. It is also increasing. That means the graph, as you move from left to right, increases. It means it goes, it increases up to this point, right? From left to right, it should increase up to that point. So it looks like that. All right, this is what it looks like. Any questions about that one? I would say this is kind of a easier curve sketching one. All right, great. Um, we're almost up to the, the material from this week. Let's try, so how about, um, Absolute extrema, and then one, uh, I'll do an antiderivative, and then whatever else you guys want to talk about, we can do. So let's try a absolute extrema. Find the absolute extrema of um, x squared minus 6x plus 1 on the interval 0 to 4. Let's try that. I hope you remember the procedure for this. You find the critical numbers that are inside the interval, and then you make a little chart uh, comparing the x and y values for all critical numbers and also the interval endpoints. So let's find the critical numbers first of all. I go f prime of x is the derivative, 2x minus 6. I set this equal to 0 to find the critical numbers. 2x minus 6 equals 0. 2x equals 6 x equal 3. All right, this is uh, my only critical number. And it is inside the interval, so we do need to consider it. If that, if that number is outside the interval, you don't even have to use the number at all. I make a little chart with x and y values. And what goes on the chart are critical numbers inside the interval, and also the interval endpoints, which are 0 and 4. All right. And let's find the y values for each of those. This sometimes can be a pain, but uh, if you have a calculator, it's not bad. On the test, you will not have a calculator, but I will make the, I'll make the numbers work out nicely. So um, let's plug in the 3 here. To find the y value, you plug into the original function. Don't get confused and plug into the derivative. You should plug into the original function. So it's 3 squared minus 6 times 3 plus 1. What is that? You actually need to know the answer here. This is 9 minus 18 plus 1. That would be negative 8, I believe. All right. How about 0? Okay, this one's easy. Uh, 0 squared minus 6 times 0 plus 1. That's 0 minus 0 plus 1, which is 1. And then finally, 4. 4 squared minus 6 times 4 plus 1. That's 16 minus 24 plus 1. 16 minus 24 being negative 8, plus 1, negative 7. All right. Now we just choose the biggest and the smallest. The biggest is 1, the smallest is negative 8. And so I say, um, how about this? I'll say the absolute maximum is at x equals 3, y equals negative 8. What? That's the minimum, sorry minimum negative 8 is the smallest and then the maximum is the other one absolute maximum is at x equals 0 with the y value 1 that's the biggest all right
This is a typical absolute extreme of problem. What are your questions about that one? Ain't no questions about that one. All right, I just got one more then that I had, you know, on my list. Then we can talk about whatever you want. Let's try an antiderivative. Here's one with, this is kind of a, a tricky one, although the, the ones involving substitution, in my opinion, are much trickier. But here's a tricky one that, still does not require substitution. Uh, there was one kind of like this on the on the homework that a lot of people messed up, so I thought it might be good to try it out. Uh, we have the antiderivative of a fraction here. Now, ordinarily when you see something weird on the inside of the antiderivative, you may have to use the substitution. But in this case, you don't need the substitution because you can, because the denominator is just a single power of x, I'm going to Move the denominator up by using a negative exponent and then distribute it across the numerator. So let's try this. There are other ways you can simplify this too, however you want to do it, as long as it works for you. Actually, can I make this a little more interesting? Let me put an 8 right there, 8x cubed. This will be even better. All right. I move the bottom, the denominator up to the top. Instead of x cubed in the denominator, it becomes x to the minus 3. You also got to do something with the 8. Uh, you cannot just bring the 8 out of the denominator as an 8. It has to come out as a 1 over 8. That is to, um, to sort of compensate for the fact that it, it was in a denominator, right? So you can't just make it times 8. It's actually times 1 8. That's what dividing by 8 is all about. All right, dx. Okay, and now I'm going to distribute here like this. This guy right here goes there, 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 right? Let's do it. Integral. So 10x squared is being multiplied by 1 eighth x to the minus 3. Uh, 10 and 1 eighth makes 10 eighths, whatever that is. And then x squared times x to the minus 3 in this situation, you should be adding the exponents, and so I get x to the minus 1. All right? Continue. Plus 7x times 1 eighth x to the third, uh, x to the negative third. So it becomes 7 eighths x to the minus 2. That's because I add the exponents. I have an x to the 1 and x to the minus 3. Add them up, and I get minus 2. All right, and then at the end, 1 eighth x to the minus 3 dx. What happened to my screen? Oh, it's all right. I froze for a moment. OK, uh, notice I am still writing the integral sign every time. I hope that you are too. That's because I didn't do the integral yet. All I'm doing is rewriting, simplifying the inside. But now, after all that, now is the moment when I am finally ready to actually do the integral. So I'm not going to write the integral sign this time because I'm actually going to do the, inter the integral. Go down the list here and... Sorry, my computer is trying to do something in the background, which is making it choppy. Uh, go down the list, taking the antiderivative each time. Each of those coefficients will just remain as a coefficient, right? 10 over 8. Um, nothing happens to that because it's a coefficient, so it's just going to be a 10 over 8 in front of my answer. And then, anybody remember, what is the antiderivative of x to the minus 1? ln x. Yeah, thank you for that. It is ln absolute value x. All right. That is a special rule. When it's x to the minus 1 power, you get the natural log. If it's any other power, um, you do the thing about you increase the power by 1, and then you divide by the power. So that's what we're going to do in the other two. 7 eighths, and then x to the minus 2 becomes 1 over negative 1, x to the negative 1. And then minus 1 eighth times x to the minus 3 becomes 1 over minus 2, x to the minus 2. And I put my plus c. All right, you can, um, you can probably simplify those fractions a bit, but I don't care about that. This is the antiderivative. All right. And those are all the examples I wanted to do. Any questions about this one I just did? Yeah, sorry about that. Um, yeah, go ahead. So, uh, I, again, this is like a semantic question, but is there a particular reason why, so you know how, um, if, you, if you scroll up a little bit, yep. to, there we go, um, where you first distributed the 1 8 x to the negative 3, 
Is there a reason why you write on the back half of the equation instead of the front half of the equation? No. Oh, just a, you can, just a U yeah, reference. so if you wanted to, it's the same. Is this what you mean? You could have written it this way. Yeah, I just want to know if there was a, like, a particular reason why you why you wrote it like that. Nope, they're, they're both the same, and you can do it either, either way around. Awesome, okay. Yep. Thank you. All right. Great. So uh, we got nine minutes on the clock. Um, what else should we do? I can do another example of, of any anyone uh, you like. I mean, I didn't do the, the, late, the two latest topics because that's what all the examples I did yesterday were about those, but we can do some of those if you want. What do you say? The anti the antiderivative? Yeah, another one of Sure. You want like so there was this section which is a little easier in my opinion, and then there's the substitution which is harder. You want to do a another Um, can we do this section? Sure. Okay. Um how about uh so the sort of the the very easiest ones of these would be if it's just a polynomial something like 10x to the 5 minus 3x squared plus 2dx. Uh, in this case, you can just go straight down the line, do the antiderivatives of each one. So this would be 10, 1, 6x to the 6. Every time you just leave the same coefficient like it is, and then you do that little thing with the exponent, all right? Anyone remember, what do I do with just 2? Yeah, just 2 becomes 2x, and then, of course, I put plus c. Um, how could this be more complicated than that? Uh, it, it, not really. So another thing that might happen is you could have something like 3x squared plus 5 squared dx. This one is uh, complicated by this squaring right here. Um, you cannot just do the integral of these things inside the parentheses because this squaring messes it all up. Um, anybody have a suggestion how we could uh, work that out? You have to somehow take care of the squaring. You multiply it, uh, multiply them together. Yeah, like multiply it out, like. Uh, like a foil. So you write it this way, 3x squared plus 5, 3x squared plus 5, like that, right? And then you can actually multiply these together with the foil. The first part is going to be 9x to the 4, right? The inside product is 5 times 3x squared, that would be 15x squared, and then the outside is also 15x squared, so I get plus, they're going to add together to give me 30x squared, and then on the end, plus 25. 5 times 5 is 25. All right. I still wrote the integral sign because I didn't do the integral yet. I just was simplifying on the inside. And now I'm going to do the integral. So we get 9 times 1 fifth x to the 5 plus 30 times 1 third x to the 3 plus 25x. No dx. Come on now. Plus c. All right. Any questions about that one? I got one more. Let's just do one more quick. So here's another thing that you might see in integral, which which I haven't mentioned today. How about um, how about integral of four times three to the two x dx? This one, you're going to have to use one of those formulas that I said I was going to give you on the test. So they are on the back of the review sheet. Um, first of all, how are you going to handle this four times, this, this business here, four times e, uh, 3 to the 2x? Actually, there's not much to say about this four times at all. The four is just a coefficient. So, oops, switch to yellow. So... I can just say in my answer, there's just going to be a 4 in the front of it, whatever it is. The 4 has no effect on anything apart from just sitting on the front of the answer. And then, what do I do with integral 3 to the 2x? If you look on your list of formulas there, you will find one that looks like this. 
integral of a to the kx. So this is what you use when the variable, the x, is inside the exponent. And the base, that's the big number downstairs, is not e. It's some other number. So in this example, the, um, the a is 3, and the k is 2. That's the other number upstairs. So uh, And the answer, you know, the formula is this, 1 over k ln a, a to the kx plus c. So that's what I'm going to do over here, and all you got to do is plug it in. So I get 1 over k, in our case, is 2. Ln a would be ln 3 times a to the k. Oops, i got to use our values. 3 to the 2x. And then a plus c, as always. All right. I hope that's what you had in mind. What else? We got we got a couple minutes. Any any quick ones? Quickies? Well, we have to memorize the uh, antiderivative formulas or are those the Now the ones on the paper will be given to you. Do you have the paper? All right, thank you. Yeah, it's so uh, anyone that's not on that paper, you'll have to memorize. Although there aren't really other ones. I mean, you should know. So, like, here's one that's not on the paper is integral of x to the n is 1 over n plus 1, x to the n plus 1. But th this is the one you use all the time, so you should know that anyway. This this will not be on the paper, but you should know it. And this one about x to the minus 1, it is natural log of x. Those you need to memorize. Are you going to ask us a lot of word problems, like, pertaining to, like, those ones, like, all those like the ones well, on the all homework the you gave us on the homework yeah uh, I wouldn't say a lot I mean the, those are really just one of the sections so you should expect at most one of those type questions okay perfect thank you did you want me to ask you a lot of them no please no. Right. <laughs> all right well, our time is about up, but um, I have my office hours are, you know, from now until 3. So if anybody does have more questions, hang around, and I will be happy to chat with you. Otherwise, uh, I'll see you all on Friday. Uh, let me know by email, too, if you have more questions.